Hello, you join me on a disgustingly wintry day here in Derbyshire. My name's Jasper, you're watching Buckle Up, and this is an L322 Range Rover. Don't worry, you don't need to adjust your screens. It is quite a big car, and I am quite a small man. Now this is actually my L322 Range Rover and today I'm going to try and justify my purchase. I'll get on to why I bought it in a bit, but um, let's have a look at some of the styling first. And a very good place to start is the front, which you will either see coming towards you on a country lane or in your rear view mirror on the motorway. Um, now the front of the L322 is quite slabbish but i'd argue it's a relatively well styled slab um, you've got quite a prominent bumper and a very formidable grille now this is a 2011 model it came with a private plate which i don't particularly like but it came with it so it's still on it um, and in 2010 the exterior was facelifted a little bit and that meant you've got three strikes of LED lights in your indicators. You've got bi-xenon headlamps uh, which have LED accents around them and you've also got these fog lamps here in the lower section of the bumper. Now this grille is the latest one that appeared on the L322 and it's got an, a nice pattern in it and it's got three distinct kind of levels uh, flanked by the Land Rover badge and obviously the Range Rover script across the front of the bonnet because you need to tell people what you're driving if you have one of these. Um, quite a formidable bumper um, that sticks out a decent chunk further than the top edge of the grille and it's very imposing the front of this is is you, you know what's coming when you see it um it's a range rover let's see the side which i think is the best angle now to me this is the most instantly recognizable angle you can view a range rover from because for me this silhouette is the one that comes to mind when somebody says Range Rover. The kind of boxy styling with a very slab front, slab side, and this iconic silhouette of the windscreen and cabin with quite a sharp drop off at the rear of the car. You know, there's a reason why Doug DeMuro still has his Range Rover styled intro, despite not having owned a Range Rover for a few years now. Um, it's such an iconic piece of design that, um, yeah, you, you, you know what it is when you look at it. Um, one of the things that I love about the Range Rover is this vent here. Now this is kind of a classic piece of design that um, is a way you can tell the Range Rover apart from say the Range Rover Sport because this vent here is real and um, it's a styling feature that has been retained uh, through to newer generations, although not necessarily in a real form. Uh, this is actually a functional vent here. Um, I've got some running boards that help me and my tiny legs get into my very big car, um, which is taller than me. <laughs> and um, you've got not actually that much styling per se around the side. It's more about the silhouette for me. However, you've got this gorgeous line that runs from the uh, the bottom of the bonnet all the way through the rear doors to the very rear of the car. Um, I've got contrasting but colour matched to the grille uh, door handles, a nice dark grey, uh, 20 inch alloy wheels and uh, please excuse the muck on the car but I do live in the middle of nowhere and it's winter so it's going to get a bit grubby, I'm afraid. As this is one of the facelifted versions of the L322, uh, something that changed in 2007 was the C-pillar became clad in glass as opposed to being a distinctive piece of bodywork visible on the outside. So that really kind of tidied up the rear two thirds of the car and made it seem a lot more cohesive going from your privacy glass in the rear windows straight through to the boot line at the back here. 
Another instantly recognizable angle of the Range Rover is of course the back, not least because you've got the large Range Rover script across the tailgate, but also because it's such a tall vehicle with a very, again, iconic styling behind it. Um, now, here at the rear you can see large reverse lights, you can also see, because it's very dirty, uh, where the rear wiper is kind of hidden up at the top in the rear section of bodywork that overhangs the glass. Um, you can also see a tow bar. I don't particularly intend to tow with this vehicle, but um, it's a possibility, I could do so. And uh, you can see, or rather you can't see, any exhaust tips and that combined with this badge here, TDV8, tells me that this is a diesel Range Rover. More on the engine in a bit. Now the trim level is also highlighted here on the back of the car and this is a Vogue SE trim which means it's one level up from the base, <laughs> base on a Range Rover, uh, the base trim of Vogue and that means you get some extra little bits inside as well as access to some more optional extras that are only available on certain higher trim levels. Um, one of the most iconic things though about the rear of the Range Rover is of course the ability to open your split folding tailgate and perch. Um, so I can now spend my days sitting on the boot of my Range Rover watching things. Nice to know I can do that I guess. Um, in all seriousness though, um, this split folding tailgate does actually have its uses because it means you can get into the boot quickly to put something in or take something out without having to open the whole thing but of course if you want to put something larger in you can drop this lower section and then you've got access to the cavernous boot within. Let's have a look inside. Interior-wise, in the front seats, it is an incredibly lovely interior. Um, I am on really nice quality leather, um, and I've got a leather-wrapped steering wheel, leather-wrapped dashboard, which in this case is a black leather, which contrasts nicely to the covering of the centre section of the dashboard, which is matched on the door cards. Um, in this interior, really the quality is second to none. Um, every single thing you touch and can touch is so high quality. It all feels really nice to touch and hold. Um, everything's got that nice little bit of squidge to it. You've got some gorgeous gloss black plastic and a really nice embossed badge in the dashboard here above the glove boxes. And yes, I say glove boxes. The interior of the Range Rover is very practical. I've actually got an upper and lower glove box, um, which is very handy for all of the stuff I don't put in it. Um, you've got small door pockets where you can close the doors um, and much larger door pockets down in the footwells. I've got three cup holders up front, the middle of which would be brilliant for carrying a an unnamed brand of energy drink. Um, and then under this armrest, I've got a top section, which is great for your hand sanitizer and fuel receipts. And then this lower section, which is a much larger cubby, and it's actually held open with a gas strut, which has a lot of room in it for things like chewing gum or whatever else you like to keep in the center console of your car. There's a small ashtray here, which I will never use. Um, and the whole layout of the dash is incredibly sensible. You've got easy access to all of the controls, so your climate controls sit here, and then you've got heated seat controls below that. You've got access for various different ventilation modes, your defrost buttons, boot opening, parking sensors. Um, you've got center of air vents here, and one of the critical things that happened in the 2007 facelift was Land Rover added these center air vents up here. Now these really help with airflow in the cabin, means you can defrost stuff a lot quicker and it gets the cabin much warmer or much cooler much faster. Um, gorgeous piano black gloss plastic down the right hand side, um, 
lovely air vents here again, headlight controls on a switch on the dashboard, fog light controls, and you've also got some gorgeous uh, footwell lighting built into this upper portion of the dashboard here. Well, the upper portion of the lower section, if you know what I mean. Front and centre, you've got a relatively small, by modern standards, infotainment system. Um, now, this has built-in navigation, not that I use it, um, and the L322 was in that era where Bluetooth phone calls were a thing, but Bluetooth media streaming wasn't. So you can pair your phone to this and have phone calls. However, there's no factory option for Bluetooth music streaming. However, you can plug an iPod in down here and you can get um, adapters which basically make Bluetooth streaming possible through that iPod connection. Now this centre screen has a lot of different options that you can display on it. It's got a lot of vehicle controls built in, specifically for sound system, navigation, and critically, you can also display a lot of off-road functions in this screen as well. Now down in the centre console here, I've got my terrain response options as well as the controls for the height adjustable air suspension. Um, I've got hill descent control, and the option to change between high and low ranges for the transfer case as well. I've also got a lovely 12 inch LCD digital drivers cluster here. Now that was one of the replacements that was made in the 2010 model year update. Um, previously it was two normal analog readout dials, but this is now a fully digital cluster. It displays a lovely sunset seen as you uh, get in or out of the car and it also means that you've got a lot of a lot more configurability in terms of what information you can display here very handy in the back of the Range Rover you've got heated seats which is standard on Vogue SE trims and higher and you've also got a third climate zone for rear passengers. Now the quality of materials in the back is just as high as that up front and you've got a tremendous amount of leg and headroom which means that this car is just as comfortable to be driven in as it is to drive. So what is the Range Rover like to drive? Um, in one word easy. Uh, it very much is a point and go kind of car because you've got the eight-speed automatic gearbox and um, well that's that's about it really. Put, put that in drive and off you go. It rides incredibly well um, for such a heavy vehicle obviously uh, about two and a half plus tons um, riding on air suspension, that air suspension really does take out all of the imperfections in the road. Um, the roads around where I live are <laughs> pretty dreadful and um, this is so much more comfortable than either of my previous cars was. Um, you really, I mean you obviously feel the larger bumps but any small imperfections are just ironed out by the heft and the air suspension. Visibility all round is excellent, especially forwards and to the sides. You've got huge wing mirrors, which really do mean you can see absolutely everything behind you. Uh, rear visibility is pretty good. You've got um, the headrests in the rear, which do block out some of your some of the, the view behind you, but not a tremendous amount. And you've still got a really good view behind, especially using the wing mirrors. Now, the engine, while being a 4.4 litre twin turbocharged diesel V8, um, now a diesel engine is never going to be the smoothest or quietest um, power plant to have in a car. You know, they are inherently much noisier than their petrol powered equivalents. However, the engine in this, the 4.4 litre Ford unit, is very smooth for its size and given it's a diesel. You don't get a tremendous amount of noise coming through to the cabin, um, especially at lower revs. Obviously if you put your foot down you do feel 
um, and hear some of that noise and vibration coming through but one thing the cabin and the Range Rover is very good at doing is isolating you from external noise including that of the engine uh, so when you're up to speed on a motorway you've got very little road noise coming through you've actually got double glazed windows so that helps keep a little bit more of the external noise out um, and it's a very refined and quite relaxing driving experience all in all I've got auto headlights auto wipers and the auto wipers are generally pretty good you've got the ability to adjust the sensitivity of them one of the other things that's probably worth mentioning about the driving experience is how high up you actually sit um, now the first time I drove this on a motorway I drove past a few pickup trucks and a couple of transit vans and I was like oh I am at the same level as those drivers um, you really do sit up quite high I can't kind of understate how high up you sit especially in comparison with my previous cars my smart roadster and Corsa um, you see so much more from sitting this high up I've seen over hedges and seen new things that I didn't know existed on the other side of of those hedges simply because I can actually look over things now because you sit up so high and can actually see the four corners of the car it's incredibly easy to place on the road and know exactly where the edge of your car is in relation to hedgerows or other cars in traffic the steering wheel is quite large uh, the steering you know in this kind of car it's not going to have a tremendous amount of feedback and feel but given the size of car and how kind of isolated you are from the road you do get a reasonable amount of feedback through to your hands the 8-speed ZF automatic gearbox really does pair well with this engine now the 4.4 litre turbo diesel V8 produces 313 metric horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque that torque figure is the highest amount of torque that was actually available in any of the L322 variants so even the 5 litre supercharged petrol engine while it came close did not actually produce the same amount of torque as this one does um, that amount of torque really does make driving setting off even if you were were to do any towing it makes all of that incredibly effortless because you've just got so much pulling power underneath your right foot you can move the world you select the gears using the rotary shift knob which rises out of the dash when you turn the ignition on which has a very premium feel to it um, you've got reverse neutral drive and then also a sport option which does feel a little bit unnecessary in uh, a, an SUV of this size um, that is also lumbered with a big diesel engine however put it in sport the shifts are a little bit snappier and it also holds a lower gear for longer so your revs are held a little bit higher so you do have a little bit more punch off the line but there's not really much point in uh, in a sport mode in a car like this in my opinion anyway um, if you wanted a sporty driving experience you would get an estate or at least the petrol models let's talk about the elephant in the room fuel economy now fuel economy in something of this size is never going to be as good as an estate of a similar size or a hatchback um, and yes this is a diesel vehicle but that yes that that does mean that it's slightly better than a petrol powered equivalent however it's by no means uh, going to win you any kind of economy runs um, on a run motorway driving at semi sensible speeds you can get mid to high 30s miles per gallon out of this um, in urban driving you will kind of struggle to see the good side of 20 and in, in mixed driving I tend to get mid 20s miles per gallon which isn't horrendous given 4.4 litre V8 but um, it's of course a little bit more expensive to run than either of my previous cars were but then again I'm no longer running two cars so I can in my man logic head justify that
And the main reason that I ended up buying this car, well, two reasons really, there are two things that I care about in a car. One of which is, does it feel a little bit special to drive? And the second of which is, is, is the interior nice? Um, I am a bit of a stickler when it comes to the quality of the cabin that I spend my time in. Um, and obviously you can't really, especially at the price point of this, get much better cabin materials than you can in a Range Rover. Um, you know, everything in here is gorgeous. The leather dashboard, the leather steering wheel, all of the center console plastics and buttons, brilliant. And then with regards to, does it feel a little bit special to drive? Absolutely. Now, it's a very different driving experience than say the Smart Roadster was, um, because that was incredibly low to the ground, not a great deal of power, but also not a great deal of weight. Um, and that was very much about the handling and the grip that the car had and the, its ability to take corners surprisingly quickly. Um, this is obviously nothing like that, but it still feels special. You do feel quite powerful sitting up this high. Um, the visibility really does lend itself to kind of a, a feeling of not superiority, but superiority. You, you do feel kind of well-to-do when driving along in, in a Range Rover. I guess my conclusion to this would be, yes, I really like my new car. It's not the most sensible choice for me, but my goodness, do I enjoy driving it. I'm pretty happy with my purchase and uh, yeah, here's hoping it stays that way. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please let me know by liking and subscribing to the Buckle Up YouTube channel if you have not already. And please also check out some of our social medias, which are linked in the description and also some of our playlists or other content right here on YouTube. I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye. Derbyshire and this is a cow. <laughs>